Good morning. May I call the registrar to, to ask the registrar to call out the name and number of the case? L'affaire Case IT 9516. The prosecutor of the tribunal again, Zoran Kupreskic, Miriam Kupreskic, Vladko Kupreskic, Vladimir Shantic, also known as Lado, Drago Josipovic, and Dragan Papic. Thank you. Appearances for the prosecutor. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. My name is Mark Harmon. I will be representing the prosecutor this morning, and I will be assisted by my colleagues, Terry Bowers, who's seated to my right, and Mr. Mike Blackstall, who is seating, seated to my left. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Counsel for the accused, please introduce yourself and spell out your name clearly. Would you also please indicate which bar you belong you to? Your Honours, microphone. Your Honours, my name is Borislav Kraina, an attorney from Sarajevo, a member of the Bar of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I am defence counsel for the accused, Vlatko Kupreskic. With me is my learned colleague, Jelimir Par, an attorney from Zagreb. Before we begin, I would like to check whether the accused can hear me in a language which is accessible to him. May I ask the accused whether he can follow, can understand what I'm saying? Yes? Your Honours, I understand you very well and hear you perfectly. Thank you. Now, we now can commence this hearing. As you know, this is the initial appearance of the accused before the International Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And the hearing is being held in accordance with the statute of our tribunal, as well as the rules of procedure and evidence to formally charge the accused. As you know, these proceedings are being recorded and will be available to the public. Rule 62 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence requires that an accused, after having his indictment confirmed by a judge of this tribunal, and after having been arrested and surrendered to the custody of the International Tribunal, must be formally charged at a procedure described as the initial appearance. Due to injuries sustained by the accused in the course of resisting arrest by S4 troops, this initial appearance has had to be delayed until the accused was deemed to be medically fit to appear before this international tribunal. We have now been informed that the accused is fit to enter his pleas to the charges brought against him by the prosecutor. I would like now to ask the accused to rise and state for the trial chamber his name, date and place of birth. Your Honours, my name is Vladko Kupreskic. I was born on the 1st of January, 1958, in Pirici, Vites municipality, the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you know that uh, the rules governing the proceeding, our proceedings today, are laid down in Articles 20 and 21 of the statute of our tribunal, and the also mention should also be made of Rule 62. I think you are all familiar with these provisions, so we I will not uh, try to summarize them for you, and but we will proceed in accordance with the aforementioned provi provisions. May I now 
ask the defense counsel whether he and his client have received copies of the indictment in a language which they understand and whether the contents of the indictment were understood. Have you had adequate time to confer with your client in preparation for this initial appearance? This is a question I am asking you. Your Honours, we have received the indictment and understood everything it contains. We have had sufficient time to confer with our client so that we are quite prepared for today's hearing. Now, the indictment was issued by the prosecutor on the 2nd of November 1995 and, as you know, was confirmed by Judge MacDonald on the 10th of November 1995. Five of the persons indicting, along with the accused, are already in the custody of the International Tribunal and have made their initial appearances accordingly. Charges against Marinko Katavo and Stipo Alilovic have been withdrawn by the prosecutor and therefore all references to them will be omitted in the, in the indictment. Now, in principle, under our statute and our rules, procedure and evidence, the entire indictment should be read out in court. May I ask whether the accused is prepared to waive this right to a public reading of the indictment? May I ask you, Defence Counsel, whether the accused is prepared to waive his right to the reading out in court of the indictment? Or would you like to, the indictment to be read out? Of course, we would read out the relevant parts, the portion, portions of the indictment which relate to the accused. Your Honours, we have agreed that there is no need to read the indictment in its entirety. But if there is a short version, then we would be in favour of that shorter version being read out. Well, I would say there's not, not a short version, but we could read out only those portions of the indictment which deal with the accused. We would skip the parts of the indictment which uh, concern the other accused we, who have already come here for the initial appearance. Do you want those portions to be read out in court? No. Uh, no, Your Honours, we feel that will not be necessary. Thank you. Thank you. We can therefore now move on, and I would like to turn to the accused. May I ask you uh, to rise, Mr. Kupreskic? Could you stand up? Uh, your counsel has informed the trial chamber that you have received a copy of the indictment in a language which you understand and that you comprehend the contents of the indictment. Please, could you confirm whether this is correct? Your Honours, I have understood clearly the allegations in the indictment. However, it is not clear to me why my name is linked to that indictment. Well, this is for this is a, a question which we cannot answer. The real name, I assume, is linked to that indictment because, according to the prosecutor, you uh, uh, must be charged with some uh, crimes which are set out in the indictment. Uh, I would uh, like, therefore, to move on and uh, to. Uh, recall each of the charges against you, which are, as I say, set out in the indictment. Could you please tell the trial chamber whether you plead guilty 
or not guilty after I have put each count to you. Now, the form of words we wish you to use is either I plead guilty or I plead not guilty. Have you understood all this? Mm, yes, sir. I have. So count, count one. I'll start with count one. It is alleged that you individually and in concert with Zoran Kupeskic, Mirian Kupeskic, Vladimir Shantic, Drago Yosipovic and Dragan Papic participated in the unlawful and wanton destruction of property not justified by military necessity. A grave breach recognized by Article 2D of the Tribunal's Statute. How do you plead? Miss? I absolutely did not participate and I plead not guilty. Thank you. Count two. It is alleged that you individually and in concert with Zoran Kupeskic, Mirian Kupeskic, Vladimir Shantic, Drago Yosipovic and Dragan Papic participated in the deliberate attack on the civilian population and wanton destruction of a village, a violation of the laws or customs of war recognized by Article 3 of the Tribunal Statute. How do you plead? I did not participate, nor did I do those things, and I plead not guilty. Count nine. It is alleged that you participated in the willful killing of Fata Peze, a grave breach recognized by Article 2A of the Tribunal Statute. How do you plead? I neither had occasion to do something like that, nor the opportunity to do it, nor the courage, nor the interest. I am absolutely not guilty. All right, you plead not guilty. Count 10. It is alleged that you participated in the willful killing of Fata Peza a violation of the laws or customs of war recognized by Article 3 of the Tribunal Statute. How do you plead? Absolutely. I am absolutely not guilty because I am not capable of doing such a thing. Count 11. It is alleged that you participated in willfully causing Zenana Peza and a Bosnian Muslim civilian great suffering or serious injury to body or health. A grave breach recognized by Article 2C of the Tribunal Statute. How do you plead? My uh, life and my authority would not allow this. I didn't do that and I am absolutely not guilty. Count 12. It is alleged that you participated in willfully causing Zenana Peza and a Bosnian Muslim civilian great suffering or serious injury to body or health, a violation of the laws or customs of war recognized by Article 3 of the Tribunal Statute. How do you plead? Absolutely. I plead absolutely not guilty. Thank you. You may now be seated. Thank you. Uh, you will be remanded now to the further custody of the International Tribunal and kept in the detention unit until further order is made. Would the Registrar please note the pleas of the accused?
Now, as the accused has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him, it is necessary for us to consider the organization of the work of the trial chamber and the setting of a date for the trial. Now, I wonder whether the registrar is able to set a date for the trial now. May I ask the registrar whether? Uh, no, no, I'm not capable for the moment to give you the date for the beginning of trial. Thank you. We shall then have to wait confirmation from the registry or suggestion from the registry. Uh, I would like to remind now the prosecutor of his obligation under Rule 66 bis of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence to make available to the defense and within 30 days of this initial appearance copies of the supporting material which accompanied the indictment when confirmation was sought and also all prior statements obtained by the office of the prosecutor from the accused. Also, the prosecutor is obliged to make available no later than 60 days before the date set for trial copies of the statements of all witnesses whom the prosecutor intends to call to testify at trial. The statements of any additional witnesses shall be made available as soon as a decision is made to call those witnesses. Further orders may be made by the trial chamber in the interests of a fair and expeditious trial for the accused. Could I therefore ask if any such documents have already been provided to the defense? If, it, if not, could I ask if the prosecutor could indicate a time frame within which these materials can be provided to defense counsel. Mr. 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 President, and your honors, prior to the commencement of this proceeding, I provided counsel with copies of all supporting materials that accompanied the indictment in this case. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Kraina, do you understand what the prosecutor has just said? Uh, you have been entitled and you have received all the documents that, there were, uh, were, that were attached to the indictment and to the request for information. Now, I wish to remind the parties that under Rule 72 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence, they have 60, 60 days from the date of disclosure by the prosecutor to the defense of all material and statements provided under Rule 66 bis A, 60 days within which they must file any preliminary motions. Other motions, of course, may be filed under Rule 73. You are aware of this time limit, 60 days for filing preliminary motions. I wonder whether my colleagues have, have any further questions. No questions? Now, as you know, it has been agreed that following this hearing, a closed session status conference will be held here, actually in half an hour, in order to look in greater detail at the state of preparedness of the parties for trial and also in order to settle any outstanding issues. If there are no comments or no suggestions or queries from either the defense or the prosecutor, I will now call an adjournment uh, for 30 minutes, after which we shall reconvene in closed session to deal with this status conference. The hearing is adjourned. All right, for your vote.